let me give you a couple scenarios. In scenario 1, we have a florist standing outside of his shop one morning. Are you the proprietor of this establishment? Yes, I am. Can I help you with something? You'd better. Excuse me. Here's the deal. From this day forward, at the end of each week I will be stopping by your establishment to collect 10% of your weekly profits. You fail to pay. Bad things will happen at home, at work, in your car. You get the picture, don't you? You, you, yes sir. As soon as the man is gone, the florist calls the police. You call the police? Yes officer, I did. What seems to be the problem? A man stopped by about 20 minutes ago, threatening to do harm to my family if I don't give him 10% of my weekly profits. Can you give me a description of the man? Yes, he was around 6 foot 2 inches tall. Short gray hair, blue eyes. He was wearing black pants with yellow stripes on the sides, and a light blue shirt with a black tie. Okay. We will put a plain clothes officer in your store this afternoon and he will come in daily as if he is an employee until Friday. We'll get this guy, I promise. Thank you officer. Now, in scenario 2, we have a man sitting on the park bench talking to his pastor. Yes, pastor. I know I wasn't in a Sunday morning service. I had to work that morning. Gotta pay those bills. But I will be at church next Sunday for sure. One more thing. Our treasury department shows that you have not been tithing for some time. You must give God 10% of your income, or he will cause bad things to happen at home, at work, in your car. You get the picture, don't you? You, you, yes sir. The fact is, if the members of the second man's church would take the time to open their Bibles at home, and study every scripture, every verse, that has anything to do with tithing, they would find that God's commanded tithe was agricultural. They would find that it was required of the children of Israel. They would find that it was not to be observed in any geographical location other than the land of Canaan. They would find that the tithe was to be given to Levites, widows, orphans and strangers in Canaan. They would find that it was never commanded of Gentile nations. They would realize that the tithe was not to be imposed upon Gentile nations. They would discover that God's tithe was still agricultural in the last place it was seen as a command in the Bible. And they would know that God never commanded anyone in the Bible to tithe their monetary income. With this concrete evidence that tithing was never money and never commanded, nor authorized for the called out assembly of believers in Christ Jesus, there can be no doubt that the gray haired man at the flower shop and the preacher in the park are guilty of the same crime, extortion. Both are threatening harm if the victim does not comply with their demands for money. Two questions to ponder. 1. Why would people consider the gray haired man to be a thief, but not consider the preacher to be a thief? And 2. Why would people consider calling the police to prevent the gray-haired man from robbing them each week, yet allow the preacher to rob them on a weekly basis? Because the preacher has them blinded to his thievery. Because of lack of Bible study, they don't even know they are being robbed. Exactly.